Hello everybody, it's Dragana from Sasebo. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to talk about pressed or dried flowers, leaves, plants. And I just want to give you some examples first of how you can use them to make your journals look really special. I'm going to show you how to dry them or press them and once they dry, how to store them. So we're going to go through the whole process together. But before we go into that technical part, I just want to quickly show you some of the things that you can make with a real plants and real flowers. I'll start with the smallest ones. These were laminated and then cut using just punches. And I like to add these little flowers. hope you can see. We go get these ones. I love adding those to charms. I mean, they are a charm as they are. They're real flowers, laminated and then cut cut out either by hand or with the punch or with uh, dice. And I like to add those to my charms. For example, have a look at this charm. It's layered cardboard, a piece of lace, and a little flower. And there's also a sun charm at the back. I think they are just really cute. Another thing you can do with laminated flowers uh, like this is to make specimens. I have some here, small ones some bigger ones these are made with uh, playing cards another thing you can make with them is tags have a look at these aren't they just beautiful these are just glued down with some glue varnish or mod podge or decoupage glue and i think they're just really really lovely addition to any journal this one as well it can be a little side pocket then what I like to make with them is um, have these like a page of journal toppers. This is just beautiful, this one. I love this one. It's probably going to go on top of a journal. I don't know, but I just love it. And um, you see different techniques here. This one's with the napkin. This one's with the napkin. That's without the napkin. And also here, just glued on the book page. And over here as well, that one, there's this one as well with the napkin, there's that one on the book page, a couple more here. Also, if you ever tried making handmade paper, you can certainly add dry flower petals to your paper mixture. These were, for example, made with just petals flower petals that i used when i was eco dyeing and i felt bad throwing them away so i just pressed them and this paper is really fragile it's not really like a paper but i can use it if i add glue to add a bit of texture to any page like a collage and it's really precious this is just handmade paper with added bits of uh, florals and leaves and again, this is with flower petals, but also a little bit of paper, napkin paper, I think. So that's, and it's a bit more sturdier. Again, here we have some with uh, leaves, with grass, more leaves and ferns, moss, things like that. So you can add to your paper. I have like a botanical handmade paper. Another way of using those dry flower petals and leaves is to make your faux botanical paper. I have a tutorial on this and it's basically two plies of a uh, napkin and there's uh, dry flowers and leaves in between and I use just basic ordinary white glue. And if you're wondering what am I going to do with papers like this, I can't write on it. I love to make envelopes with these. Have a look. These are not glued down yet, but I, I have cut them out to be used as envelopes. 
this one as well. That one. And this one. You can also uh, glue them on top of a page uh, or the cover and then use some varnish on top to make it look really, really special. Now, my favorite, uh, eco dyeing. It's been quite a few months since we've done these. These were done with dry flower petals, hibiscus, rose, and some fresh flowers as well. And this was no baking method eco dyeing without cooking and i love the results the the colors were so bright and then they're still there after so many months passed they haven't faded away so that's one way of uh, using dry petals you you dry them during the summer and then in the winter if you feel like making some f fun and beautiful papers you just use them you can also do the a rust method using this this was done with fresh leaves but it can be done with the dry ones just as well okay another thing jelly prints yay these were all done with fresh leaves but there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to use dry leaves if they are pressed properly and flat you can do them so for most of these things that i've shown you i have a video or tutorial so i will leave the links to all these tutorials and videos down below in the description box so now we can go into the technical details of picking drying and storing our plants and flowers as you can see i picked a whole heap of different plants and flowers and leaves now um, to be able to use them later on uh, in my projects I have to dry them otherwise they might get moldy or you know start to smell bad and um, the best way to preserve them is by drying them first now the first most obvious uh, way of drying is air drying something like this you get a shoe box or even better spread it on a in a tray on some paper and let it just air dry like this and once it's dry you can store it in your mason jars or something like that. Something that it's airtight and the moisture is not going to get inside. I like to use um, dry petals like this in my uh, botanical uh, papers and also for eco dyeing. Another way of preserving, of course, is using a microwave and a special um, equipment that goes with it for drying uh, and pressing flowers. I don't have such equipment. I just use a flower press or books. And if you're going to use a book, choose a book that you're not going to be <laughs> upset if it gets damaged. I mean, you could get a decent book and put extra papers on the inside i found this one really cheap at the flea market because it had damaged water damage so i'm using it and the way i do it is like the book is really thick so i leave space in between plants so i don't i don't put one page after page so i'd put one for example here and then i would put one up to about 20 pages and so on so that is you just you just close it leave it flat put something heavy on top and forget about it for at least a couple of weeks depends on the weather but i had them like for a year and i would forget about them and i later on uh you know it's always a nice surprise when you find some so that's the probably the easiest way to get them flat so that you can glue them and use them in your journals but if you want to take it a step further you can make yourself a flower press i made this one for myself this is i'll just show you i have some plants in here that are not ready to be taken out but i just want to open it up to show you what it looks like it is basically a chipboard you can use cardstock several layers and you have packaging cardboard ordinary one and packaging paper see what i mean so you put 
your specimens in between two papers and you always have a cardstock at the bottom and the cardstock on the top and you keep going i won't open these up because they're not ready and you close it down and you can just wrap it up like you would wrap up any sort of parcel you know i just because this is quite tough i just use an old shoelace to do this and you can do one small and you can leave it flat like that also you can put it under something heavy and again leave it for a couple of weeks at least but if you want to take it even further you can build yourself a proper flower press like this one i asked my husband to make this one for me and he did i'm very grateful and i think the flowers in here the plants that i put in here have been drying for about a month it's about time i take them out and i put new ones okay so you lift this off i usually don't take it apart but i want to show you what it looks like so it's two pieces of wood with four holes in the corners and you need something like this this and that i don't know what these parts are called but this is what they look like and these go on top of these okay plants are in here i'm very excited to see what's in here i put this about a month ago and i forgot what i have in here so these are all recycled materials I'm using. This is just from um, postage boxes and packaging paper. Wow. I see I used flowers. Okay. As you can see, these are dry. Let's see if these are dry. If they don't want to come off easily, you can always do this. Just bend the paper a little bit. Okay. The flower ones are very delicate. Okay, and you might lose a couple of uh, bits, but that's fine. Oh, I like this one. Let's see about this one. Seems like this one doesn't want to come off the paper. This one is dry. It's probably not uh, dry enough. That's why it was a bit more difficult to take it off. And you can see if, if they're not dry, you can uh, leave them in there. And, uh, this one as well. If they don't want to come off easily, that means they're not really dry. They're still a little bit moist. So. I will just put these back for now. Even these ones, I feel like they're a little bit not quite right. So in that case, what I do, I just cover this. And I put it back. So I'll just take it back. Over there. Let's see if these ones are any better. Wow, these are hibiscus. I think these look like they might be also still drying. Very delicate. These are these are dry. So what I do, I would peel them off gently like this. So 
very pretty. They preserve the color really well. Although, that's the original flower. When it's freshly picked, it's purple. It dries a blue. But it's it's beautiful color. When I said preserved, it mean, I meant uh, not faded. It has some color, although it's not the same as it was. All right, so these I'll put these aside for a minute. I'm just doing this to show you the process, okay? So you pick this the cardboard and you place a piece of paper. I use packaging paper because it's really absorbent. I suppose you can use uh, copy paper as well, as long as it's not glossy. If it, the paper is glossy or if it has wax or if it's uh, one of those shiny papers, uh, this is not going to work as well. I've done it before and the uh, leaves and flowers turned moldy. They got the spots and they didn't dry properly and they changed the color. So it's best to use absorbent paper, for example, like this. Okay. And uh, the plants that you pick, don't pick them early in the morning. They will be moist, too moist to be used for this. Now this is like in the afternoon and there was no rain today, so I'm hoping it's going to work this time. So I'm just placing them and make sure there's enough room between them so that they don't overlap. Because if they do overlap, that might uh, slow down the process. Okay. Put the small one here and this one there. And then you take another piece of the paper and you just place it gently on top. Oops. Where's the card? out okay and then you put another piece of cardboard oh. and then again you take a piece of paper I think these are ready place your leaves got some big ones here the juicier they are the longer it's going to take for them to dry but you know that don't you for this. Well, let's have some lavender. I picked the lavender flowers earlier. These are just now leaves. Okay, I have to peel this one up. Here we have African violets. Nice. And I think these are dry as well. Yes, and they look beautiful. What I love about this process is that I get some flowers when I when I get them when I have a chance. Put them in this press and I forget about them. And then when I'm inspired to do something or I get some new plants. 
I take these out and I always have fun because I forget, you know, and then it's like opening a gift. Oh, these are some pear. Pear tree leaves started turning red. They're changing color already and they're looking beautiful. So I thought I'd pick some of the red ones. I'll put them up like this. It might be easier. Because I don't really want to squash them. I want them flat. Like so. Okay. And then card stuff. Oh, sorry, cardboard. And paper. All right, let's put this one. More African violets, nice. You see, when they when they dry, they really come off easily. You just you know bend the paper a little bit, and off they go. Again, we put cardboard. Again, we put paper. Oh, more African violets. Yes. And let's arrange these. Sage. So, yeah, I love drinking tea from this herb. It's really beautiful. Just pick some and dry. And some lavender leaves. Take those off. I'm using a little bit juicier plants this time. It might take a bit longer for them to dry. We'll see. Okay. Yeah, what do we have here? Oh, I don't know the name of this plant. But the flowers are absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. So delicate. Okay, let's have the rest of this sage. And these okay. I think these are so pretty Oops. they really dry fall off themselves apart from this one okay Here. Oh, more of these. Oh, even we have some impatience. Put those. Okay. I think I destroyed that one. seem like they've really attached themselves to the paper I love using these leaves but um, they get to wrinkle up really quickly I only just picked those up and they're already starting to wilt Oh, 
I didn't realize I took one of the whole flowers and put it in there. This is a leaf. Is this dry? I'll just click one by one. This. And then I'll try to lift the middle. actually worked got really flat I can use it in a journal I'm really happy with that and these ones also just go with these leaves Here, let's put more of these. That's it. And what else do we have in here? Oh, more of the big flowers. Oh, I love these. Delicate but beautiful colors. And I have no idea what, what these are, but they're really purple. These ones, I don't know, this might be too thick to use like that. I can maybe squash them a little bit. Like that. I'll try that, see what it looks like in about a month I'll know if I made a mistake or not okay and I ran out of paper and cardstock um, I can let these air dry like that and where are the ones that are not dry enough here those back and this yeah. maybe I can add an extra piece of paper because I have an extra piece of cardstock or cardboard this way why do they have to curl up can't they stay open it's gonna be really thick there and there's this one get my press tape this and I'll put it here
here. Okay. And I might as well take what's in this one. Because I'm going away. I'm going to be taking this one with me in case I find any interesting plants while I'm on my vacation. Place those on the top like that. All right. Now I take this. Obviously, you need to tighten those. And every now and then, as this kind of sings, you have to adjust because you want everything nice and firm and squashed. You can also put something heavy on top, but I just keep doing this every day for the first few days anyway. Now I just cut up some more cardboard and paper to put in this one so that I can take it with me when I go on holidays because I'm hoping to find some interesting flowers and plants that I don't have here. Now we are left with these and we have to put them away until such time that we decide to use them because you can't have them like this lying around. They will get uh, damaged or lost. So we need to put them away and I'll show you my storage solution for this. There we go. And again, I use recycled materials. These are just brown bags and these are cellophane bags that various things were packaged in stencils or stamps or you know things that I buy online or whatever, you know. I always keep those bags. I don't throw them away because uh, I can use them for these dry plants. And I like to put some brown paper bags underneath because I can see better. And that way these, these bags are not gonna bend easily and damage the flower. So it serves also as a support for them to keep them flat like this. Okay, let me just show you some that I already have. These, these are tiny, tiny small ones. Ah, oh, these are cute. Some rose petals. Here are the African violets. I'll just put those together with these. Put aside more small ones. Again, we have some of these hibiscus flowers, and I'll put the ones that I just picked. Hydrangeas. Oh, they are like these ones. So I can put them with those. Some of these. And you can see I just saw them out either by type or the color or, you know, if I have like one or two of each, like here, I would put them together. There's some leaves here. So just various things. Oh, I love this one. Got some lavender, some of these, more leaves, more of these. Okay, so as you can see, quite a lot there. And I've used a lot of them already. Do we have here some wine leaves and so on? So I Try to put them flat if possible. Okay, I might use these. So I will put some of the new ones in here. And this is like the easiest way to do it. I take this out. I have to take these ones out as well. They tend to be like almost like static, you know, they just attach to them themselves to the these uh, acetate bags or cellophane bags I should say especially if they're fine like these ones 
So we just place them on top. I got more of these. Yep. These are so pretty. Now I'm thinking, how am I going to use these? Can't wait to use them in some projects. Okay. So what I do now that they're on this. Just slide it in. So, and close. And so they are now secure until I'm ready to use them. And I'll do the same with the rest. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. I hope you learned something and found value in it. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope I see you soon in my next video. Bye for now.